This is your one and only Firespark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Valheim video. Today we're going to take a look at the Arbalist versus the bow. Let's get to it. Let's start off by talking about the stats on the weapons and the weapons I chose to use for testing. So of course there is only one Arbalist. So that is the Arbalist I've used and you don't get it until you get to the Mistlands. So of course I have to use a bow of the same tier. So we use the Spine Snap bow which is also a Mislands tier weapon. I also use the Carapace arrows and the Carapace bolts because they are both Mislands tier and they both have the exact same amount of damage on them. This gives us an accurate representation of how much damage each of these weapons can pull off. Next, let's talk about the stats of each of the weapons. So the Spine Snap Bow has 100 durability, deals 72 pierce damage at max level, and 5 spirit damage. At the screenshot shown here and on all of my damage tests, I am at level 20 in both crossbows and bows. I feel like 20 was a good medium range for the average person's level in this game. Most people are going to be somewhere around the 20 or 30 range, but in the end, it honestly really doesn't matter because both of them are going to scale equally. So if one does more damage than the other at low level, it's going to deal more damage than the the other at high level as well. The Spine Snap also uses 14 stamina per second to draw and win drawn. It has a block armor of 3, a block force of 0, a parry bonus of 1.5, its knockback is 25, and its backstab is 3 times. Moving on to the Arbalest, the Arbalest does 200 pierce damage at max level, has a block armor of 3, a block force of 0, a parry bonus of 1.5, a knockback back of 210 and a backstab damage bonus of three times. The bow and the crossbow both reduce your move speed by 5% when they are equipped. They both also come in with the exact same weight of 1.5. So the first of many tests that I did with these things was a draw speed versus stamina use test. I ran this test at level 10 skill on both of them, level 30 skill, level 50 skill, and level 100 skill to see how it changed. One of the biggest things that I noticed is that the Arbalest is so much slower than the bow. Not only does it take longer to prime the Arbalest, but it also has an animation that it has to go through after you draw it back and load it that has to complete in order for you to fire. One would think that as soon as the bar on the screen disappears, showing that you have loaded the thing, you would be able to fire it, but that is not the case. There is a bit of a delay there. Let's start off by talking about the result results of the draw speed and stamina use at level 10. Now, I do want to note that the timers you are seeing up at the top corner of each of these is the frame count. I was going to do time, but time gets a little wonky in my editing software, and the easiest way to show the most accurate representation of how long that it takes is the frame count. Keep in mind, when you are looking at these frame counts, I record at 30 frames a second. So if you want to know the seconds that it takes for any of these, just divide the number you see up there by 30. So the first thing you will notice here is that it it took 127 frames to prime the Arbalest. It only took 66 frames to full draw the bow. Now, while it took much longer to prime the Arbalest, I want you to pay attention to the stamina use at the bottom. It took us a full 30 stamina to pull this bow back to full draw. It only took us three stamina to prime the Arbalest. So while the Arbalest does take much longer to prime before you can fire it, it uses drastically less stamina than the bow. Now, yes, you do not have to full draw the bow in order to fire it. However, your shots are going to be all over the place if you do not. Moving on to 30 skill level, you can see that it took 114 frames to prime the Arbalest and 57 frames to full draw the bow. Taking a look at the stamina use for both of these, you will notice that we used less stamina on both of them. We only used two stamina to prime the Arbalest at this level and only 24 stamina to full draw the bow. At level 50, it took us 102 frames to prime the Arbalest and 46 frames to fully draw the bow. Taking a look at the stamina usage, you will notice that the stamina usage on the Arbalest has not improved at level 50. It is still costing us two stamina to prime it. However, we do continue to see an increase in stamina usage efficiency for the bow. At this level, 
it only cost us 17 stamina to bring it to full draw. Last but not least, at level 100, it takes 77 frames to prime the Arbalest and only 15 to prime the bow. Yeah, at max level, the bow is kind of insane. Taking a look at our stamina usage at this level, it only cost us one stamina point to prime the Arbalest and it cost us four stamina to bring the bow to full draw. So at this point, we know that the Arbalest does more damage, takes longer to prime for a shot, and uses less stamina than the bow. The bow, on the other hand, uses more stamina, primes faster, and does less damage. The next thing I wanted to test is which one of these was it faster to and easier to aim with. So I set up a group of targets and set them 12 foundations away so I can make sure I was the same distance for each test run. Then I went through taking my time to shoot each target accurately. So imagine this, your average target practicing thing where you set a bunch of bottles on the wall and you shoot at them. Right from the get-go, you'll notice that it is infinitely easier to aim and fire the Arbalest. The bow has massive drop to the arrow, even at full charge. On top of that, because the bow does so much less damage, it takes me longer to knock down each individual target with the bow than it does with the Arbalest. Meaning that even though the Arbalest has a longer load time, I'm able to clear the targets faster. The Arbalest also has almost zero arrow drop. There is some, but not nearly as much as the bow. Because of the arrow drop that the bow has, I need to take time to eye up my shot and make sure that I am aimed high enough and hopefully that I am judging the arrow drop properly in order to hit my target. Meanwhile, while I am doing this and holding the bow at full charge, I'm wasting stamina. And when you are in a fight, stamina is a very valuable commodity. So because of the fact that with the Arbalest, I pretty much just point at what I'm shooting at and I'm gonna hit it, makes the Arbalest much more damage to stamina spent efficient than the bow. The other interesting thing I noticed if you look at these freeze frames here is the location at which the arrow shoots from on each of these weapons. The bow shoots from where the arrow would fire from with the bow, so it's down a little bit to the left. As where with the Arbalest, it's directly in the center of the screen. Meaning that when you are shooting with the bow, not only do you have to compensate for the arrow drop, you have to also compensate for the offset in which the projectile is firing from. This means that probably for most people, it's going to be easier for you to hit your target with the Arbalest. So as I stated earlier on in the video, every test that was done after the initial draw test was done at skill level 20, as you see here. Just a reminder, so when you see these damage tests that we're showing now, this was all done at skill level 20. So the first thing I did was I attempted to shoot the target before it realized I was there so that I could get the surprise attack damage. And even with the surprise attack damage, it took three shots to kill this seeker with a bow. As to where it only took one to bring it down with the Arbalest. Next, I wanted to test it on a one star goblin just to see if there was a difference in armor or damage overall. In this test, I also wanted to make sure that we did not get the surprise damage in order to see how many shots it would take if the target was aware of you. And because the target was aware, it took three shots for me to bring this goblin down with the crossbow. If I had gotten the surprise attack on him, it would have only taken me one, even though it is a one star goblin. Moving on to the bow, I tested the same thing, shot a warning shot first to blow the surprise, and then started shooting the goblin. Note that I leveled here in the middle of this test, but I reset my skill level before I continued testing back down to 20. It took me a total of six shots to bring down the goblin with the bow after making sure that I had spoiled the surprise. However, getting the surprise on the goblin only took three shots because that first hit was absolutely massive. A few other things I would like to point out is that you cannot sprint and load the Arbalest. If you sprint, you cancel the load animation. You can also not jump and load the Arbalest. If you jump, you will cancel the load animation. The only thing you can do while loading the Arbalest is stand still or walk. The bow has the advantage here because while you also cannot sprint while having the bow drawn, you can jump and draw the bow at the same time. So the bow has a slight maneuverability advantage on the Arbalest. However, something that the bow is not nearly as good at as the Arbalest is a spin snapshot. You can do a quick 360 shot with the Arbalest and probably hit your target a majority of the time than with the bow.
low because of that needing the time to judge your shot and judge where your target is. With the Arbalist, you just point at it and shoot and you're probably going to hit it if your reticle is on the target. Now, I'm not saying this is impossible to do with the bow. It's completely possible to do with the bow. I'm just saying it's probably going to be easier for most people to do it with the Arbalist than it would be to do it with the bow. The other thing is that once the Arbalist is primed, you can then run and jump and do whatever you need to do and fire the shot off. The only time you can't do any of those things and you lose maneuverability is when you are loading, where when you are trying to aim with the bow, you are locked into a quick walk the full time. As stated, you can still jump, but your maneuverability is still way more compromised when you are trying to fire. And personally, I feel like kiting with the Arbalist is easier to do than with the bow. Now, keep in mind that is completely subjective and my opinion. You may feel very differently. Whether or not it is easier to kite with the bow or the crossbow is going to be something that is completely subjective because it can't really be quantified in any way because it's reliant on the player's skill. The reason I feel that it is easier to kite with the Arbalist is because while I am loading, I can focus on movement and don't have to focus on trying to aim and fire at the target. I feel like most of the time when I am kiting something with the bow, I am walking backwards and I have no idea what I'm walking into. As where with the Arbalist, I can take my sights off of the target and focus on moving and then turn around and shoot the target. In conclusion, from the testing that I have done, the Arbalist is more or less a high powered sniper rifle and the bow is more or less an assault rifle. If you think of them like that, it will give you a good idea of their different play styles. The Arbalist is way more damage heavy and way more stamina efficient than the bow. The bow is way faster than the Arbalist at the cost of increased stamina use. All right, well, let me know what you all think about these findings down there in the comment section. Did you find this video helpful or informational? If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.